Coming up on DTNS, Google is ditching desserts, Bose is taking on Sonos, and does the future of aggregate news look any different than the present? This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, August 22nd, 2019. From Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. From Oakland, California, I'm Justin Robert Young. And I'm Roger Chang, the show's producer. Before the show, Roger and Justin and Amos and I were all talking about fast food and what we like best and why people are waiting in line for a very, very special kind of chicken sandwich. If you want to know more about these and other fascinating topics, you should listen to Good Day Internet. It's our it's our sister show. In fact, it's kind of the sandwich of the show. It happens before and after DTNS, and you can become a member by signing up at patreon.com slash DTNS. All right, let's start the show with a few tech things you should know. Sources tell 9to5 Ma- Google rather that Google is p- preparing to launch the Nest Mini, which is a successor to the Google Home Mini. The Nest Mini will reportedly feature improved sound output with a higher maximum volume and better bass, offer a wall mounting option, has a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack, and proximity awareness to display the current volume as you approach the device. The form factor will reportedly stay roughly the same. The Linux Foundation announced the Confidential Computing Consortium to create encryption standards, frameworks, and tools on devices, apps, and services. Current standards focus on data at rest or in transit. The consortium will focus on data in use. Contributors include Microsoft and its Open Enclave SDK, Intel and its Software Guard Extensions SDK, and Red Hat with its Narcs project. A framework is now running serverless apps in trusted executive environments. Other launch members are Alibaba Cloud, Arm, Baidu, Google Cloud, IBM, Swisscom, and Tencent. Quite a consortium. Machine data software provider Splunk announced plans to acquire cloud monitoring company SignalFX for $1.05 billion, which is Splunk's largest acquisition to date. CEO Doug Merritt said that the purchase will let Splunk offer customers a single data platform that can monitor cloud native infrastructure and enterprise applications in real time. In its latest quarterly earnings report, Splunk's earnings came in at $0.30 cents per share on revenue of $517 million, which is up 33% from the same time last year. Apple is warning new physical Apple Card customers that, quote, some fabrics like leather and denim might cause permanent discoloration that will not wash off. And place your card in a slot in your wallet or billfold without touching another credit card. If two credit cards are placed in the same slot, your card could become scratched, end quote. (laughs) The company recommends wiping down the card with a damp microfiber cloth to keep it clean and, quote, don't use window or household cleaners, compressed air, aerosol sprays, solvents, ammonia, or abrasive to clean your titanium Apple card. Wow. This is, uh, this is, a, this is precious <laughs> cargo, man. I mean, a- anything physical where a company like Apple is like, and definitely don't put it next to another credit card. I'm like, nope, do not want that physical card. Yeah. You want to know what? <laughs> cool. Uh, I'll just leave it at home. <laughs> In other Apple news, let's talk a little bit more about some rumors that are starting to inch closer to reality. Sources tell Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, they're Apple, pretty good Apple source, that Apple will launch pro phones as previously rumored. And updated iPads as well at an event next month. The Pro phones are said to feature OLED screens, lose 3D touch for a haptic touch long press, use a new A13 processor with dedicated AMX coprocessor for computer vision and AR, feature improved water resistance, and wire- wirelessly charge other devices. The two high-end models may offer three rear camera sensors with the addition of a wide-angle lens. That would be nice. Also let users retouch, apply effects, after uh, alter colors, reframe, and even crop video while still recording the video. The 11 and 12.9 inch iPad Pros will reportedly have new processors as well and similarly improved cameras and Apple may also introduce a new 10.2 inch iPad and discontinue the current 9.7 inch model. Watch OS uh, 6 is said to get updates as well as new case finishes for the Apple Watch and we're still hearing, hearing rumors about that 16 inch MacBook Pro as well. Justin, I don't know. We're talking like, I don't know. We're moving tenths of inches around at this point. A lot Mm. lot of different form factors. Remember remember when these were like so exciting? 
and we would like get into fights and everybody would be like, oh, Android did this a while ago and this isn't new. And never it would just be it would dominate the news cycle for like a week and a half. Just yeah. a whiff of what's going to be on these new iPhones. But look, now you just read the stuff and you're like, cool. It'll probably cost a lot of money. Like well, that. and there was, it was there was a time where when there was a new let's just stick with iPhone, right? If you're if you're an Apple fan and you wanted it, there was just one, right? The storage yeah. they, they'd give you a couple storage options, but yeah. it's like you have this thing, and now you're part of some elite crew, maybe in your own mind. Sure. But that's what it was. And now, even though having more options is arguably better for almost every consumer it does bring down the spectacle enough so that it's just like all right you know what's what what's that okay fine yeah. what's the new one someone tell me what to get attack of the skews mm -hmm. uh google's abandoning desserts sarah what justin how could yeah. they well well we're gonna find out the company's next android release previously known as android q will become android 10 Google VP of product management for Android, Samir Samat, said that the sugary nomenclature tended to confuse new users and aren't applicable to Android's global audience. Google also announced a redesign of its Play Store to incorporate material design. Mobile devices will now have a navigation bar at the bottom of the Play Store. Games and apps will now have distinct destinations. Rounded square app icons are now standard for all apps and... App pages feature more information about the ads, in-app purchases, downloads, and a bigger install button. The design rolls out to Android users this week. Sarah, I always thought that the dessert thing was a, a way for Google to show a little bit more humanity. Like Google as a company tends to be maybe a little cold and so this was a yeah, way heavy on the engineering you know yeah, you, could, you could make things a little bit more fun you know that's why you have a funny little android man he's eating the snickers bar <laughs> right, everyone's yeah. having a good time what dessert is he gonna be, have next know. yeah you know it, it, although i've never had an android device weirdly enough actually that's not true i do have a tablet uh somewhere but um i always sort of enjoyed the speculation of what the next dessert would be based on how you know going through the alphabet that was kind of fun you know, it's it doesn't mean much i understand that that the company's like you know the, the whole dessert thing we have such a global uh consumer base and this doesn't necessarily translate to everybody in the same uh, way and yeah. it's starting to feel maybe a little long in the tooth i get that um i also get that if you're going to go ahead with Android 10, this is a good time to do it. You know, it's kind of, you know, it's almost like you're starting fresh. It's a good number to say like, all right, Android 10, that's what we're doing from here. Uh, at the same time, it kind of, it sort of takes a little fun out of it. I think uh, this has been there, done that thing for them in terms of the branding. Like, like, it wasn't like you were going to, you know, surprise anybody of like, oh, like now it's a macaroon. Hooray. Like, I'm really excited for Android Mac. Right. Android. It was like 15 minutes of like, ooh, what could it be that also starts with the letter M? Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, Roger, before the show, was looking through the Play Store and oohing and aahing a little bit about the design looking a little bit nicer. So, uh, for, yeah. I, I, for me personally, it uh, does make navigating the store a little bit snappier, just faster because you can jump directly to games instead of going through one one additional menu. Um, you know, overall, the look's nice. I mean, I, I, w I wish some of the apps were better written, but, uh, I mean, that's neither here nor there with the Play Store. Uh, but, you know, it's always nice to get a, a refresh so you feel at least the company's keeping its eye on it, you know, that there there's something that's still happening and it isn't just kind of set on cruise control. Well, if you've got strong feelings about Android or Google, rather, uh, ditching desserts, let us know. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. <laughs> but, but, but enough about candy and chocolate. Let's talk yeah. about M&M. Not every day I can say that on this show. <laughs> M&M's publisher, 8 Mile Style, has filed a lawsuit against Spotify claiming that the service has infringed hundreds of song copyrights of M&M's. In a Nashville federal court, 8 Mile accused Spotify of reproducing the song Lose Yourself and about 250 of the rapper's other songs on its service and claims that Spotify also isn't living up to its obligations under the music monitors. Modernization Act, I knew I was going to do that, a federal law that was enacted last October, 
that was widely praised by streaming services and, and publishers, aiming to streamline processes both for tech companies and payments for artists. The suit adds that Spotify put Lose Yourself, that song again, into a category under the new act called copyright control, which is reserved for songs that have no known owner. Because, of course, 8 Mile Style is like, uh, we very clearly are the owner of the song. That is completely ridiculous. And you're just trying to skirt around giving us the the uh, the money that we feel that we are owed. Yeah. So for anybody who's like, well, I haven't been following the story. So before this new Music Moder Modernization Act, the issue was is that under copyright law, Spotify or another similar service could obtain a license, a compulsory license, for mechanical reproduction of a song. However, it needed to send out a notice of intention and then make required payments. So it had to get in touch with the owner of the song. Now that's not always possible. Sometimes the, these owners, you know, can't be tracked down. You can't get confirmation. There's there's a communication issue. So the whole idea but, but with the new act was that matching songs would be run through a database by a mechanical licensing collective, and then that, then the someone like a Spotify or a similar service would be granted a blanket license that's beginning in 2021. So this is still kind of getting put together, and like I said, sort of lauded by people across the industry as the yeah, this is the this is a better way to go about doing this. But Eminem's folks say, yeah, well, but but this act is actually we've got we have beef from what you've been doing for the last several years and we're yeah. owed a lot of money. And I don't know, Justin, what do you make of this? I have one more question for you. So right. when you say a mechanical reproduction. Yes. Is that them doing a cover? Is that them just having another file of what is clearly Eminem singing, lose yourself that is on the service? Like what is a mechanical reproduction? It means it, it, it's a mechanical reproduction is a way to serve you Justin that song through the platform. Gotcha. Okay. So that's so, so this is literally I, I, when I turn it on, it's not somebody else singing, lose yourself. This is Eminem singing, lose yourself. Right. Gotcha. Uh, or, or it could be another, you know, that's that, that would also fall under the, I mean, the argument here paid because he's the songwriter. So theoretically at some point, somebody would yeah. have paid him for something. Uh, uh, all right. So this is a uh, part of a rash of a lot of music lawsuits that are going around right now. Uh, the lawyer on this uh, particular lawsuit is, uh, was also the lawyer that, uh, represented the Marvin Gaye estate against, uh, the blurred lines, uh, lawsuit. There's been a lot of these like, all right, did you take the, the feel or the mood or the tempo of a certain song and should a hit song have to pay out to somebody else? This I think has a lot more merit because you are dealing with a gigantic behemoth. This is the future of all uh, music, and Eminem should be getting paid for for what he has done. If if Spotify did put him in a category that would not have paid him out as much, then that is something that he should address. There's another sort of interesting twist to this: is that the new Music Modernization Act uh, apparently gave uh, copyright holders, owners of music, until New Year's Eve of 2018 to file any lawsuits and grievances that 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 they might. Um, yeah. Tom, Tom Petty's camp did that, exactly, on New Year's Eve, in fact. Eminem's folks didn't and said, well, that's not fair. Uh, we Now that we've kind of surveyed the landscape here, we do feel that you owe us quite a bit of money. Um, and and just because we didn't meet some deadline for this new act, we do not agree with it. And, you know, we, we're, we're looking at uh, bill, uh, millions, two billions of dollars that we feel we are owed in back pay. Yeah. So there we go. Soon to be co-owner of Spotify, Eminem. Uh, <laughs> Bose announced that the portable home speaker with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth that supports Google Assistant, Amazon's A Word, AirPlay 2, and Spotify Connect. It weighs 2.3 pounds and has a uh, conical design for a 360 degree sound output and a carrying handle. The aluminum enclosure is rated IPX4 water resistance. It charges over USB C, or you can buy a charging cradle for $29. It's available September 19th for $349 in black or silver. Sonos is rumored to be announcing its own Bluetooth speaker, the Sonos Move, at an event 
on August 26th. Oh, look at Bo is getting in a week early before Sonos' biggest big announcement of something that sounds like pretty much the exact same Bluetooth speaker. Isn't it kind of weird that both of these brands, which were known initially for like audio quality, unsurpassed audiophile uh, of yes. consumer brand stuff, now are like in what had traditionally been the like cheapo speaker game of like Bluetooth portable. Like, like that, that was, uh, it, it would have seemed almost a, a, a totally brand opposite for Bose and Sonos a few years ago to be in this game. And yet that's just the place where the market is right now. Well, it's, yeah, it, you're right. Uh, in fact, even though there've been pretty good Bluetooth speakers for some time, it was, you know, and I've got a couple Sonos ones. They do have great audio quality and, yep. and, and, and people uh, rave about their uh, comp competitor good speakers as well. I've never actually been around a home pod in anyone's home only in an apple store but again you know good quality for the most part but now we're getting to the point where the companies are like all right now what's an extra thing i can do aha let's add some water resistance a handle uh and then throw in bluetooth so they could take it to the beach <laughs> you know? I mean, that's what that's what this is right yeah Right. And and it'll be better quality than the Bluetooth speakers of yesteryear. I love this. I mean, the the fact that all of the assistants for the most part are represented and it's if you're a Bose person, I used to have noise canceling headphones from Bose. They were very nice, although kind of pricey. And so is the speaker. You're you're you why why wouldn't you go with a third party smart speaker at this point rather than, you know, a home pod, which is is much less um, open. Well, I mean, I, I think uh, uh, the HomePod is probably uh, much, much like the Apple credit card, something that people have kind of just ignored. <laughs> Wash it gently and don't yes, put please. it next to Microfiber anything that might scratch it. Do not look directly at the HomePod. Only the finest silk when you take your HomePod <laughs> to the beach. The Washington Post reports that 12 of the U.S.'s largest telcos... 12 of them? Wow, didn't even know we had 12. Have signed a pledge to implement technology to spot and block robocalls. Gosh, these stories make me so happy. Making anti-robocall tools available for free to consumers and deploy a system that will label calls as real or spam to fight a practice known as spoofing. The pledge is part of an agreement between 51 attorneys general and the industry to fight robocalling, which is on the rise or has been for some time anyway. The carriers include AT&T, Comcast, Spring, T-Mobile, Verizon, Windstream, and US Cellular. Nope. Now, the, the fact that I get, and I'm not even kidding, about 10 robocalls I, a day on average. I, uh, I just wanna, uh, I miswrote that it's not Spring, it's Sprint. Sprint. I was like Springs. One Typo. of those twelve. Might, might One of those twelve I've never heard of. Uh, uh, sprint. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Thanks, Raj. But uh, the the fact robocalls, I I've gotten good at ignoring them, but it's I want them to not happen at all, right? And I still there's a tiny part of me inside every time I deny a call from Montana because I don't know anybody who lives there currently. What if somebody was trying to get a hold of me? And I I hope they leave a voicemail. They never do. Yeah. But uh, and I, you know, and I don't know how well this technology is going to work and it's going to vary between telcos, but moving in the right direction gives me hope. Phones are corrupted tech, in my opinion, and largely because of this. Uh, uh, I would not be shocked if, you know, people just leave their phone on silent. Right. There are so many different ways that people can get in touch with you. There are so many ways in our modern world that you can stay, that you can do the things that you would have otherwise done with voice, even other voice assistants like Skype and, and uh, FaceTime and stuff like that. That the idea of just always having your phone ring with all these robocalls, because I'm with you, I'm not at 10, but I'm certainly at five or six a day. Mm hmm. Also, you said you wouldn't be shocked if someone left their phone on silent. My phone has been on silent for like five years. Yeah. And and I don't I don't blame <laughs> don't. Any, I would not blame anybody yeah. for it. Like I, yeah. I still have like that the, the, the twitchy old reporters instinct that I, I want to leave it on just in case some source that I called nine years ago and I still worked in the field is calling me back for something. But like <laughs> other than that, I, I totally understand people just leaving their phone like you know, not only on silent, but like just don't ring right to voicemail for everything. Yeah, every once in a while I'm like, oh, I think my phone's vibrating. Where is it? Mm, yeah. I don't know, I'll just like get it later. They'll text me. Hey everybody, to get the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, it's a great companion show to this here show. Subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com.
Justin, you mentioned news, news yeah. gathering. Uh, we're all avid news readers, in fact. Mm -hmm. And now News Corp wants to compete <laughs> with Google News with an aggregation service. It's calling News, and that's mm -hmm. spelled K-N-E-W-Z. Get it? That was the sound of my soul escaping through my spine and rattling out my nose and mouth. I was so hurt by the, just reading that. I think the Postal Service had a song about that, actually. <laughs> the, the Wall Street Journal, which is notably owned by News Corp, is, is reporting the story. So the the here's the situation. An official launch on the web and a mobile app might come later this year, assuming that News Corp is proceeding with the project. Sources say that the idea is to draw from hundreds of news sources and present an alternative to Google News and, and the news that you get on platforms like Facebook. Both, among others, have been criticized over giving proper reward and attribution to publishers, and they introduce potential bias depending on who you talk to. Articles from canews.com, we'll just call it canews for our purposes today, will link directly to publisher sites. News Corp just says it's not planning to take a cut of advertising revenue, and it wants to share valuable data with the publishers. Aha! While it will incorporate national outlets, including the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times and the Washington Post and NBC News, it also says it will include publishers with conservative audiences, Daily Wire, Daily Caller, Washington Free Beacon, um, and also liberal audiences, Daily Cost, Think Progress, etc. Uh, news aggregators are not perfect. Um, that's why I, I use a few. Uh, regularly. I think that we also probably crunch a lot more news than the average person, although lots of people who are DTNS uh, listeners uh, share our love for news and information. Do we think canoes.com is going to do something that that Google News is not already doing pretty well? Tipper canoes, can you? Uh, well, it'll certainly put, it is, it is an attempt by a major media company that owns a lot of, uh, a few of these news properties to take some of the power out of Google's hands, or at least introduce a player into the marketplace that could further strengthen the position of the people that actually produce the news versus the platforms that surface it for so many users. Yes, this is about bias on some level, I guess, but in reality, this is about advertising. The fact of the matter is that Google and Facebook have totally sapped the advertising market. It, they are the players in something that used to be dominated by gigantic free to the user uh, of services like newspapers. Or even though newspapers you know, cost a little bit, they were nominal. Uh, or television stations, stuff like that, radio stations. Now that has all gone online and the people uh, that are writing these stories that now surface online have to kind of count out to the Facebooks and the, the Googles of the world because that's where people get the content. So I can understand News Corp saying, look, we're going to make our own aggregator. We're going to name it something horrifying. <laughs> uh, but, but at the very least, we are going to be take, coming to this uh, situation from a news creator's perspective as opposed to Facebook and Google, which at this point are like, whatever, either list it with us or don't. We don't care. We'll find something else to surface to everybody based on their tastes. Uh, if you want to gatekeep, then that's uh, uh, fine, I guess enjoy a lot less people understanding and reading your product. Yeah. A, it's a, it's an interesting world where more and more I'm hitting, uh, I, I either have to avoid certain news outlets that have paywalls or I'm hitting my monthly limit <laughs> real, real soon into the month. And so I've got to uh, go to uh, another source that has basically regurgitated what the first source is that isn't behind a paywall to sometimes yeah. get my news. And so as a consumer and a reader of a lot of news, you know, I wish I could pay for, for all the quality content that, that I, that I am absorbing all the time. I don't, I don't. And I, because there are easy ways around it and there have been for a long time. So that's a little bit of a conundrum that, that I personally have. So aggregators in general that give me a lot of what I need to know in one place is just convenience more than anything. I just, you know, News Corp, whether or not you, you you're, taking how you feel about what the company might be to you out of the equation, just the fact that it's an owner of one of the largest publications that will get top 
billing because the Wall Street Journal is, you know, breaks a lot of stories, certainly in the tech sector, of course. Yeah. You know, that's already like a biased thing that's that's going to not sit well with folks. I mean, in another era, that would have been the big story. But we're not in that era anymore mm. because it's the devil, you know, versus the devil, the, the, the devil that you don't. At the end of the day, there's a lot of people that know reporters and, and media executives that know the News Corp people. Right. They're in New York. They're not in Silicon Valley. They're not in these other uh, places that don't care about media. They care about the clicks. They care about keeping people coming back to their platform. So, yes, there might be some bias. There might be some insider uh, baseball there where a Wall Street Journal version of the story gets a higher placement than a New York Times version. Right. But right now, I think anybody in that pre predominantly New York-based media would prefer that to the whims of what's happening at, at uh, you know, uh, Palo Alto and Mountain View. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, there was a time not that long ago where I was a Verizon employee. I worked for TechCrunch, yep. which was owned by AOL, which was owned by Verizon. And we were so far removed from whatever was happening there that we read stories about ourselves just like everybody else did. And that's actually true. I mean, maybe somebody at my company knew more than they were letting on. But for the most part, people working in news organizations have, you know, there, there isn't a lot of, okay, you know, we're, I mean, yeah, we're, we're going to go ahead and give you the better slot, wink, wink, because, you know, you're part of the family type thing. But at the same time, it's harder to, you got, people are taking that, all of that with a grain of salt anyway, and it's harder to, to know for sure. But you're right. We're in an era where, you know, somebody owns the, somebody owns that trusted site that you love so much. And you just, you, you either have to, accept it, or you have to constantly be questioning what anybody is doing. Now, here's one thing, and uh, uh, as we get out of here, I will never give my money to something that is named so profanely as Canoes is. However, <laughs> there might be a rebranded version of this or something else along these lines where I think the end goal of an aggregator like this is to be the place where you can manage your paywalls, where you can say, all right, look, I, I Sure. Let me make, make it easy for me to sign into the New York Times, make it easy for me to, to manage my paywall with the Washington Post, possibly give me some other uh, a, a package deal where, where I pay for both of them in one flat thing, and then just surface the things that when I click, I read, and I don't have to hit that super annoying half fade, you have zero articles remaining, despite the fact that it's the, the second day into the month. Mm-hmm. I have found if you're really quick, sometimes you can command A and then copy paste into, <laughs> into a nice blank text edit doc and you can feel really superior. That Doesn't always work, but I can do it when Sarah, I'm uh... Sarah's dirtbag tip of the day. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep them coming. That'll be my Thursday <laughs> ongoing segment. Yeah. Uh, to our patrons. <laughs> Patreon.com plus GTNS. Thanks to everybody who also participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. We're also on Facebook. Join our group, facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. In the mailbag today, Dominic weighed in in our discussion in Tuesday's show about subscription fatigue. We were with Patrick Beja. Patrick and I were talking about all of our subscriptions, whether it be gaming and media, and boy, does it add up, and how do you deal with it, and, and, and what's the best way for it? Dom says, can I call you Dom? Your conversation was primarily around gaming and video, but for me, I've been feeling the subscription anger rising because it's not just entertainment, it's my to-do list, it's my cloud storage, it's my newsreader, podcast player, notes app, and more. They all want a monthly subscription. When coupled with entertainment subscriptions, it's easy to look at a credit card statement and throw your hands up in frustration. Dom says, I understand companies need money to stay in business. I'm happy to support them, but since everything is asking for money monthly, some stuff just has to go. For what it's worth, I'd prefer to buy an app or software service annually over that monthly subscription. And they, a lot of services do offer an annual subscription, usually with a, a little bit of a discount because you're you're uh, you're saying you're you're committing to a 12 month thing. But I hear you, man. I mean, with my creative cloud subscriptions and I got a meditation app I'm paying for at this, you know, it's <laughs> my monthly app bills are like, oh, hmm, it's kind of looking like a cable bill at this point. 
Yeah, yeah, that is a, a, a real hard one to juggle. And uh, one of these days, I'll look at my credit card statement and figure something out. Well, that's the nice thing is that if you don't look at it, it isn't real. So, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, like, it's like calories on vacation. Right. Yeah. You just, just don't pay attention and it goes right yeah. away. Yeah. Uh, thank you to everybody who writes into our mailbag every day. Keep those emails coming. And also thanks to Justin Robert Young. Justin, what's going on in your world? You've got some stuff coming up. Yeah, leaving out for Austin, Texas tomorrow because on Tuesday, August 27th, we will be at OOB Fest. That is the Out of Bounds Comedy Festival in Austin, Texas. That is Tuesday night uh, at uh, 8.30. Night Attack is doing a live show, all right? It's also got two comics that are uh, opening up, Clara Blackstone and Kai Krebs, and they're going to be fantastic. But guess what? For DTNS listeners, the headliner is this. Tom Merritt is flying out from Los Angeles to be on this night attack show live at the out of bounds comedy festival. It's get out of theater. town. Yeah. Hide what out a lineup. downstairs. But you want to know what the best part is Sarah? What? The price $10. We haven't done, we haven't done a $10 show when it's just our podcast, but because the out of bounds comedy festival is awesome. You get all that for 10 bucks. So come on out on a Tuesday night, eight 30, uh, it's going to be a really, really fun time. Night Attack Live. You can get your tickets at oobfest.com. And again, we are on Tuesday, August 27th. Get your Taco Tuesday and you get mm -hmm. some comedy. What could yeah. be better? Great. That, is, that will be a night to remember. Hey, also, thanks to our patrons. You make our show what it is. You keep our show afloat, and we thank you all for it. If you're not a patron yet, you get a lot of cool stuff. You get an ad-free RSS feed. You get lots of behind-the-scenes information, newsletters, updates from the from, I was going to say the cast and crew. Who am I? Some Hollywood producer. Uh, Tom it, uh, Tom is, well, he's on vacation right now, but he's been doing more and more in-depth interviews with really fascinating people in the tech science uh, education space. Lots of stuff. As a patron, you have so many good goodies to get. Sign up at patreon.com slash GTNS. And I want to mention, we also have a store. Want to rock one of our t-shirts? Want a mug? Want something else? Got a lot of stuff there. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash store. Maybe it's somebody's birthday coming up and they're just going to love it. Be the hero. And get some merch. Our email address is feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com. We're also live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. That's 2030 UTC. And you can find out more at DailyTechNewsShow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Shannon Morse and Len Peralta. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>